So for yin yoga, remember that each pose is supposed to be held for three minutes. So it's definitely beneficial to have a timer with you because three minutes is a lot longer than we think, especially when we're just yeah. starting to get into meditation and stretching, okay? So to get into the shoelace pose, you basically assume all fours, okay? And then what you wanna do is you want to start by bringing one of the legs more in the center so that it's kind of in the center of your body and then you're gonna kick one leg back Yep. And then that leg is going to come right behind the other one, nice and snug. And you really want to make sure it's firmly planted in there. And then the leg that's in front, you're just going to twist that foot out of it. There you go. Good. Okay. And that just allows you now to place one hand on that foot, one hand on the other foot. And then you can sit back. Okay, so we often have a tendency to fall towards the bottom leg. So what I want you to do is really focus on bringing your whole body weight over towards that top leg and you're going to feel an increase in the stretch. Okay. Okay. Now, you should feel that through the top leg and into the hip, yeah. yes? Okay. Now, from here, you're just going to slowly release your hands because they were acting as a kickstand to keep your spine straight and you're kind of pushing off those hands initially, okay? And then you're gonna release those hands and you're gonna bring them forward as you start to bring your head down to your legs. Now, if you can't touch your chin to your knees yet, you just place your hands uh, in a double fisted position, like so. And then you just rest your chin into the fist. And don't worry because as the minutes go by, you're going to start noticing that you're not as tight. And then you release one hand and then you release the next hand until your chin is making contact with your knees. And the reason we release is because we always want to maintain a 5 out of 10 tissue discomfort. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to stay here for about 3 minutes. And we're just going to focus on our breath. Each breath cycle has 3 phases. The first phase is inhalation. The second phase is retention, which everybody forgets about. And it's the most important phase. And then the final phase is exhalation and that's where you just surrender and completely let your body dissolve itself of any tension that you're holding okay and you repeat this type of breathing over and over for the entire duration of your yin yoga practice i do encourage you to take some breaths that are deeper than others some can be quiet but i do encourage some deep ones okay that will really create an internal stretch within your body and I don't discourage at all letting out audible sighs when you're exhaling. So, for example, inhale, hold, and ah. Just letting those ah sounds or oh, those kind of sounds create an internal vibration in your body. Okay, so not, and, or the boo sound is also a very healing sound, so V is in Victor, U, okay, so those, those sounds are very, very healing and they create this beautiful internal vibration in the body that helps um, achieve better meditation, okay? So let's just hold here and let's begin by just closing the eyes and finding that 5 out of 10 tissue discomfort through your hips. And now just focusing on that inhalation, hold, and exhale, completely surrendering all that tension in your body. Just letting it dissolve.
when we are trying to achieve optimal meditation capacity, I find it helpful to travel to the right side of the brain. And as you may know, there are two hemispheres to the brain. There is the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And the left hemisphere is very much focused on the I and the ego and everything that makes you, you as an individual, separate from all the other energy that surrounds you. It's all about what you need to get done what makes you who you are, what defines you as a human. Once again, separate from all the other energy that surrounds you. But when meditating, it's important to be able to travel to the right side of our brain where we are no longer an individual, but now connected to all the energy that is beyond us, all the energy that allows us to feel expansive and light and free. It energizes us as we begin to feel this serenity that begins to fill your body and releasing it of its constraints. You now open yourself to everything that is beyond you and allowing it to guide you and heal you. Remember, as you begin to feel yourself falling deeper into the stretch, you can move your hands away from your knees, placing your palms up towards the ceiling, allowing yourself to accept change. Palms down is a reflection of a non-willingness to accept change. Our palms up represents your willingness and readiness for change. I'm going to take two more breaths here before we come out of this pose nice and slow. And we're going to transfer to the other side. Take one more deep breath in for four. Hold and let go. Now you can turn your palms down for a moment as you bring yourself back to your feet. And you're going to push off your feet to help propel your body weight forward. And very slowly, you are going to uncross your legs from one another and assuming the all four position once again. And I emphasize the slow transition out of these poses because when we're doing in yoga, we are not stretching the muscular system. We are stretching or lengthening the ligamentous system. So if you just shift your hips side to side, allowing all those tissues that have been lengthened just the opportunity to recoil slightly. So ligaments are not like muscles, they just connect bone to bone, but in order to effectively stretch them, you need to hold positions for at least three minutes, upwards of eight minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to the next side. Remember when we're doing 
this shoelace pose. You bring the knee into the center of your body where your belly button would be. The other leg extends back. You kick it out straight back. And then you slide that knee right behind the other leg. Yep. And then you kick out that front leg so it fans out. Then you find your feet with your hands and you make sure you're not gravitating towards that bottom leg. You want to make sure that you're right in the center. If you require propping on your bum because you can't quite achieve this position, that is highly recommended so that you can get into this position. And then once again, once you're comfortable, you're just going to let your arms go so you can sink into that stretch. You can place your fists back on the knee and place your chin into that area. Or if this side is more flexible, then you can go right down to the floor, depending on where you are and how each side feels. Okay, and so now we're going to close those eyes again. And we're going to go back into the meditation. Now keep in mind when you're doing your own meditation at home, alone, there will be no talking, there will be no distractions, there will be no instruction. It'll just be you and the right side of your brain. All the energy that is beyond you. All that fuel that energizes you, you will allow it to enter into your body and allowing yourself to no longer be an individual but to be connected with everything that channels through you daily and that does help heal and energize your spirit. But we have to consciously make that decision to travel to the right side of our brain to be able to experience the beauty and the serenity that we can experience here on earth. It should begin to feel very light and peaceful. You should begin to feel your body melting away and just releasing itself from any tension or constraint that it's holding. And you have to give yourself permission to experience everything that comes with meditation. Meditation can sometimes be incredibly intense. You may feel emotions of sadness, of joy, of fear. You may cry, you may have release. All of those emotions are possible when you allow your body the freedom to experience whatever it is it needs to experience to heal. Don't try and stop the feelings that are coming to you. Just allow yourself to experience the beauty of healing in all capacities. We are driven by a society that causes our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight nervous system, to be on overdrive, operating all the time, afraid of threats, and always, always high stress, high cortisol levels, inhibiting or impacting the possibility of healing and resting and digesting to occur optimally. Now through meditation, we can shut off that system and allow the parasympathetic nervous system 
which is your rest, digest, and heal system. And we can allow that system to override the other system so that our body can begin to reap the benefits of allowing our rest, digest, and healing system to operate. Because for as long as our fight or flight system is operating, the rest and digest system fails. We're going to stay here for two more breaths. We're going to inhale deeply, hold, and release. Again, deep breath in, hold, and release. When you're ready, you're going to place your hands back on your feet, slowly come up, and move your body weight forward until you've reached your all fours position. Slowly bring that leg out and back into your all four position, just letting those hips sway side to side, letting those ligaments slowly recoil. Now hopefully by this point you're starting to feel a little bit more relaxed through your body. And now we're going to move into frog. So frog, the legs are gonna go nice and wide. And we're going to go down onto our chest. Again, the hands are going to fold on top of each other as you rest your forehead into the floor, into your hands, keeping that spine neutral. Perfect. A couple cueing positions here is to make sure that the hips are directly in line with the knees or slightly further back. If you can't touch your chest down to the floor, then prop yourself up with a yoga mat. But if you're successfully contacting the floor, then you don't need to put a prop under your chest. And here we're going to focus again on the breath. Let's take that deep breath in, feeling that belly now stretch and expand. And then as you exhale, just completely surrender. Inhale, retain the breath, and exhale. This time when you exhale, I want you to slow down the exhalation by blowing out candles nice and slowly, or if you think of blowing bubbles, how softly you need to blow to create the bubble. And that is how slowly I want you to let the air out as you begin to exhale. So let us try again. Deeply in, hold, and blow out those candles or that bubble very slowly. Inhale for four, hold it. And just like you would purse lip breathing or puckering your mouth to blow out candles. Slowing down the breath out. In. Hold. And let it go. When breathing.
breathing in this fashion, you should notice that the breath out takes twice as long as the breath in. This is just one of many breathing techniques. You are free to use any technique you desire. This is just another example. Now in the frog pose, it is a very beneficial pose to do a scan of your system. And so while we're here in this pose, we're gonna start by focusing on our head and forehead area. And we're just going to take notice to whether or not we might be frowning. Or if you notice there might be some tension in your forehead, just see if you can just let it go and, and, and just stop frowning. And then I want you to bring your attention to your eyes. And just see, are you squinting? Are you holding tension in your eyes? And if you are, just soften your gaze. Just let your eyes just relax a little bit. And then bring your attention into the jaw. And here I encourage you to just see if you can open your mouth slightly and just let your jaw hang forward. And just feel the difference that you get just by letting that joint relax and all the muscles that surround that joint, just letting them go. Now bring your attention into your neck and shoulder area and just see, are you maybe holding your shoulders high? Can you drop your shoulders slightly? And as we travel into the rib cage and the chest area, I just want you to observe your breath and what does it move inside of you when you breathe? When you take your inhalation, can you feel your ribs expanding and stretching apart from one another? Let's try. And let it go. The ribcage expands all the way down into your lower back. And every time you take a deep breath in, the bottom of the lungs where all the oxygen and carbon dioxide gets exchanged, they kind of poke through the very bottom of the ribcage. And they do so to allow for optimal expansion so that they can stretch and fill up and gather all the oxygen that they can every time we take those deep breaths. And so if you can feel your lower back and the sides of your abdomen, as well as the front of your abdomen spacing apart when you inhale, your breath is effectively reaching the base of your lungs and thereby increasing oxygenation in your body. When we increase the amount of oxygen that's flowing through our blood, we therefore create a change in the pH levels and we change our body from an acidic state to a much more alkaline state which is a much more optimal level that the body prefers to operate at. Now we're just going to slowly come out of the frog pose 
And again, you're going to do so gently just by coming back up onto your elbows. And you're going to just pivot your body weight forward onto your abdomen. And very, very slowly, you're going to straighten your legs out behind you. Just carefully, just kind of crawl your legs in. Try not to use too much muscle to get your legs back together. You can use your foot to kind of scoot yourself right back into the midline. And then you're just going to shift your hips side to side, just letting go. And just allowing all those ligaments in your hips and low back and pelvic floor, just letting them recoil slightly because they have been stretched and lengthened. Now we're going to move into the Sphinx. So here in this pose, we're just going to hold a reverse curve of the spine. You can hold your hands in the prayer position and then just open your palms up to the ceiling to be able to support your forehead so that you're no longer having to hold the weight of your head up. And here in this position, it's a really beautiful position to start paying attention to what's happening with your breath and where your breath is traveling to and from. In this position, I really encourage you to start paying attention to the breath and it arriving into your pelvic floor cavity. So let us begin. Inhale for four. Hold. And while you're holding, just check in to see if you're letting go of the pelvic floor muscles. And as you exhale, just allow everything to recoil together and surrender. Again, inhale. Hold. Feel the expansion in the pelvic bowl and let it go. In, hold, and let it go. One more here, in. and let it go. We're going to get through more and more of the poses, not to change the level of vibration, but you should really start feeling like your body is just quiet right now. It's very relaxed feeling. We're just going to cut down the time that we're going to hold each pose because now you have the idea, now you understand what you need to do when you're practicing in, but I do want to get through more of the poses. So now we're going to start accelerating the poses and moving through a few more, which now is going to turn into more of a power yoga. Okay, so we're going to just switch the flip here or, or flip the switch and we're going to bring the right leg up towards the hip or the armpit good we're going to stay on the left elbow and we're going to rotate the spine right around yep and then we're going to go grab the shoe the shoelace of the straight leg exactly now, a lot of people, when they're doing this cat pulling tail pose, they have a tendency to be lying on their side trying to do it because of tension that exists in the quad. So what I encourage is that you really stretch out that leg so that you're really on your belly as much as you possibly can be and then get a good pull through that quad. And you should feel a little bit more of a pull when you're doing it 
with a flatter leg that stretch out. Yeah? Okay. And then you can release that one. Now again, coming back to the neutral, sphinx pose. Wiggle out those hips, wiggle out your back. And then we're going to bring the other leg up to the armpit. And we're going to twist that torso right over once again. Using that breath, deep belly breath in. And then as you exhale, go get that foot. Push your body back. Slide the left leg out so you're really on top of your belly. Feeling a good stretch through the quad of the leg that you are pulling. So that's your cat pulling tail. Another really great hip flexor stretch that we're going to do here momentarily is we're going to now move um, into what we call downward dog. Okay, so here you're going to go up into that downward dog position. And when you're in that downward dog position, you want to make sure that your heels are in contact with the floor and that your head is pushing through your shoulders. And here you should feel a nice pull through the calves and into the back of the hamstring. If you can't get both heels down to the ground, all you're going to do is you're just going to alternate the legs left and right, trying to make sure that the heel of the straight leg is all the way down, and then you shift to the other side. And then switch, and then switch. So now leave the left leg bent, and what I want you to do is I want you to take the left foot and I want you to bring it all the way towards your right hand. So now your left hand and left knee are in line with each other and your left foot with your right hand are in line with each other. And now we get into the swan. So here we're sitting in the swan pose. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to reach all the way up. Good. Now we want to make sure that we twist the spine. So we're going to walk towards the leading leg, the one that's bent, and we're going to get the elbow, the tricep, onto the thigh, and we're going to use the thigh as a lever to twist the whole body around, trying to look for the foot behind us. And you should feel a good twist and torque through that torso. Take a deep breath in, and that's going to be tough because you're twisted, and then exhale, and as you exhale, you should be able to take up a little bit more twist, and inhale, and exhale, and then coming back to your seated swan. And right away, that should feel easier to sit in, less tight. And then you can reach forward into your sleeping swan. Again, focusing on the breath. If this was a yin yoga pose, I would encourage you to fold your arms and let your forehead rest in your arms while you just sleep in this pose for three minutes. We're now going to come back out. The hand, the right hand in line with the left foot, the left hand in line with the left knee. Tuck the back foot in so that you're ready to go up so you can push up through your hands and then slide that foot back into plank position. Walk your hands so that they're in line with each other. And then we're going to go back into the downward dog. We're going to alternate those calves once again. 
And this time we're going to keep the right leg bent and we are going to reach the right foot all the way to the left hand. And once the left uh, hand and foot are connected, then you're going to sit down into that swan position and pushing yourself back up to the seated swan. Beautiful. Now we're going to rotate. So the left tricep is going to make contact with the right thigh. So you're going to try and reach that arm right over so that you can torque your spine all the way around, looking for that straight leg behind you. Take a deep breath in. Allow your breath to stretch you from the inside out. And as you exhale, see if you can take up any more twist, any more rotation in the spine. And then come back to center, sitting swan, sleeping swan. And if it's a yin yoga pose, you just fold the arms and rest the forehead in your hands, allowing your body to completely let go of the muscular system and just tapping into the ligamentous system. Focus on your breath here. It's a beautiful pose to really feel the pelvic floor muscles lengthening. And then bring that head up. Place your hands in line with your knee and foot. Tuck that foot in the back in, getting ready to lift through your arms and then bring that back leg together with the other foot and then come back into your downward dog good and then down to all fours and the final position today is going to be the straddle pose so we're going to come in one of two fashions you can sit in your half butterfly and stretch this way or if you have enough flexibility you can sit with your leg back and this really starts to help get that inner thigh so this is another option here so it's almost like the frog pose yep and you should really feel that pulling in through this area here and otherwise you can go into your full straddle, which here, you're just gonna stretch both legs out and allow yourself to sleep here. You have to decide what your level of flexibility is, but half butterfly is fine, half straddle is fine, or full straddle. And here we're going to hold this pose back into the yin yoga style. We're going to hold this one for a minute and a half and then we'll switch to your other side and then we're going to bring our session to a conclusion. So here we go, focusing on the power of that breath. Inhale. Letting it fill every part of you and then slowly blow it out. In. Full. And. Inhale.
when you're ready, you can switch your pose to your other leg. to your breath. Where do you feel it? How deep is it traveling? Exhalation, just open your eyes slowly and begin to roll forward as you come out of that pose. Again, slowly just inching your legs back together, not quickly. Take your time. Remember, these tissues do not recoil like muscles, so they take time. It's going to feel achy when you come out of these poses. And just bring your big toes together and let your heels kind of fan out a little bit just to allow the joint to go in the opposite direction. And then give yourself one good final push up with a good breath. Just letting your spine let go. We're going to come back into the all fours position, walking the feet in, and you can conclude this with a dangle pose where you just fold the arms and let your head hang like soap on a rope, and just feel the lack of tension perhaps that's now present in your body. And perhaps there still is some tension and that's okay. It takes time and it takes some work to learn how to manage stress and teach your body how to let go of it. With your next breath in, just unfold the arms. Take that deep breath in all the way up. Bring all that energy that is beyond you into heart center and exhale as you bring it in. And namaste.